welcome to Bex Bug Outs Fiver. I'm Bex and today we're going to have a look at the Salt Escape Bivy done properly this time. I'll tell you what it is. I've seen a few episodes on YouTube featuring Salt Escape Bivy and if I can just dig one out of the pack they're using it like a sleeping bag and wondering why they're not getting down to some of the lower rated temperatures it's designed for. So here, just in the kit bag, is my orange one. This is one I keep in for rescue as, it, as if I was hiking on a mountain. And it has the reflective uh, material here, which is not like a mylar like um, an <clears throat> emergency blanket, it's a lot more durable than that. Some of the Americans are calling it um, similar to a Teflon uh, kind of material and it is designed uh, to be a bivy and not a sleeping bag. So here it is. I'll pull it out of its stuff sack in a minute. It's the Sol Escape bivy and Sol is Survive Outdoors Longer. Now as you can see I have the emergency orange here and I've had this for about three years so I can vouch for this if it's um, used properly. Let me just pull this out its sack here. As you can see it clearly states it's a Sol Escape bivy and not a Sol Escape sleeping bag. Uh, I think in the summer, like it is now, you would probably get away with just this. Um, but what I find is if you're in shorts and your t-shirt, uh, anything that touches, any skin that touches this reflective material, probably see it better here. It's, um, it makes you feel quite quite cold. Uh, I don't know why that should be. I don't let my bare skin touch this. And they really work if they're used correctly. Well, I can vouch that it is windproof. I've been out in the wind, uh, this one actually, and uh, yeah it is windproof. It says they'll add 15 degrees uh, to your sleep system. Well I think that's in fairness to SOL company that's not even an optimistic opinion. I think it'll easily achieve an extra 15 degrees. Use this as a bivy. Don't use it as a sleeping bag. You might be disappointed. I could have bought out the jungle sleeping bag and built up a really super lightweight system. And I'm going to show you now what it is I've been using in conjunction with the bivy before I set the new OD colour up. So a while ago I did test out uh, this particular one and with a four or five season sleeping bag and this um, I can safely say that between zero and five degrees I was too hot. Now if I'm comparing such a kit as this to say the MSS system, the modular um, army sleeping system, um, this is super lightweight. Lightweight sleeping bag, lightweight bivy, you can afford a really really small pack. Plenty of insulation underneath obviously it goes without saying and a shelter over the top although it's rain resistant it's not waterproof so a basher at, uh, your four season sleeping bag and sol escape bivy that will take you down sub zero I have no hesitation about that at all. Um, another thing I've also used with this is the wool uh, blanket. Um, now it does tend to come off me as I roll about. Um, there's two ways 
of doing this with a wool blanket. You can either fold it in half like an envelope and get in in between them two halves which is you know a really good system if if you don't mind it uh, coming off your body from time to time and you have to readjust. Another way I've done it is just to double it over and drape it over my body and that has had great success too. So remember um, your wool blanket is a brilliant insulator it can keep you cool in the summer as well as um, retaining your body heat in the winter so it's a good all-round bit of kit. My wool blanket isn't too heavy it's not too bulky it'll fit in any pack and it's it's really worked well especially for keeping you cool when you need to be cool and warm you up when you need to be warm a sleeping bag won't always do that so I've also used my jungle sleeping bag which I think for the job it does is okay for the summer um, remember it will take a dip in temperature before dawn uh, so watch out for that one but uh, as, as you can see from this sleeping bag system or I can use it unzipped or zipped up it just goes straight in and I've also used this system with the 90 pattern Arctic sleeping bag so it can accommodate quite a big size of sleeping bag so if you've got the sleeping bag and you're aware of what temperatures you feel comfortable sleeping at with a sleeping bag you can leave the tent at home and you can really just put one of these just straight in your pocket and you're going to be good for some low temperatures like I said uh, my four season sleeping bag uh, did me quite well three it was between three and five degrees so it wasn't absolutely freezing I'm talking centigrade there I'm going to put the ground sheet down this down sleeping bag in I'll be carrying the red or the orange rescue and the OD green um, I can swap and change the outer skin depending on whether I require assistance and I want to get noticed or we use the green one and I can introduce a little bit of stealth camouflage it's far too much we're having a heat wave and I've got a four season bag it's just what was in the kit bag at the time a wool blanket will live will suffice I think So this one's in OD green. So it has the zipper to the right of how I sleep, on the right shoulder. Comes down less than a third the length. I slip the hood section of the sleeping bag here into the hood section of the bivvy and I do like to just tighten that up just a little bit on the toddle so it does have a cord lock toddle allowing me to cinch the hood section right up if required and of course, also loosen it off. Now I haven't put any insulation down with me. It's only a quick demonstration of how to correctly use your bivvy. Now in this kind of temperatures, I wouldn't even bother zipping up. 
Um, hold up. Got a brilliant canopy above me. Uh, I can use the hood. Already, I am roasting. So in these kind of temperatures, uh, you're not going to need a bag as big as this. As you saw, we could have used um, a wool blanket, which would have regulated my body temperature throughout certainly three months of the year there. And then in the latter part of the year, this would come out. I haven't actually done any winter bivying in this, but I have tested it. And it was, like I said, certainly good to blow zero. If I were to take my time to fold up this, it would fit neatly into its stuff sack and the cord lock has just shot off this. That's what I was having a little giggle about as I was setting up. But of course, I could just use my thumbs to feed it in. But rolling it up does seem to work a bit better. Um, I might even have a spare toddle for that at home. I don't usually bother with the stuff sacks, but I'm going to keep this one. So, uh, water resistant, not waterproof. Um, a good tarp should sort that out, or a canopy of a good tree. And it is totally breathable as well. So it will allow condensation to escape. So I can actually blow through this and I can feel it on the other side of my hand. Now this one here, like I said, about three years old, still going strong, but it's the wrong colour. I would rather something a little more stealthy. And at the time I bought that orange one, they didn't have the stealthy OD green. And I'm going to need a bit of stealth for the next few bivvy camps because uh, I've got a bit of leave coming up. Well, I've got quite a bit of leave coming up. So that's quite a bit of camping. One of them will definitely feature that green uh, bivvy. And I'm not too sure, I'll probably go with the wool blanket. Uh, I'm certainly not going to bring anything more warm than the wool blanket for that one. Hardly takes up any room in your pack at all. And it's a fantastic bit of kit. But everyone I've seen on YouTube seems to want to use, use it as a sleeping bag. And they lie straight in it on the floor probably in the house and uh, they'll say well it was all right i hit a cold spot well of course you will uh is it it's not a sleeping bag and they never said it was so sol the people who make this actually do market it as a bivy bag not a sleeping bag and i think that's really important to remember if you want success with your kit is you've got to learn how to use them you've got to know its capabilities like I said I was thinking of using the orange one as a liner I'm not going to do that even because um, any body uh, any skin parts touching that reflective fabric just feels a bit clammy a bit cold it's not nice Perhaps even something like my softy suit would probably suffice in uh, temperatures like we have now. We're in actually in a mini heat wave here in the UK and last night I couldn't sleep at all, even at home. Uh, so maybe you could get away with 
using it as a sleeping bag in extreme heat wave conditions and you just want something to get in and uh, probably just to keep you out of the elements a little more. So I do like the fact now I can keep a much lighter weight system if I were to bring out the solar skate bivvy and maybe the jungle bag and a small hexy stove and my Pat 58 mug, canteen mug uh, that's the way I'll probably be going for a lightweight system um, I've never actually built myself a lightweight system and I'm not talking about super lightweight systems like you see some people do where they're chewing the fingernails to save weight it's uh, I don't think I'll ever achieve that kind of lightweight but this is a step in the right direction as I was uh, walking through here this morning I uh, found a brilliant old tree that's come down and behind it you'll notice uh, that I could have used behind here as a, a natural windbreak, a natural shelter um, but unfortunately when I got here the, the fox, the red fox uh, little cub I've just found him, he's been dead maybe a day, maybe two days it's a real shame because you know I was watching him grow up uh, a lot of filming has been done, well, let's go back uh, a lot of filming for some of the trials I've done here and uh, I, I often see him scurrying about trying to hide from me uh, and what a shame it doesn't look like he'd been attacked or anything I don't know whether he's been shot by the farmer it's a real shame because the farmer doesn't have to he's only got cows in the field or some kind of bulls or whatever they are so I don't think a fox would chase anything that sort of size so if you're in the UK you might have to put your hand in your pocket for the Sol Escape bivvy there'll be postage on it I dare say there may if you're really unlucky be a customs charge it ended up costing quite a bit if I'm honest with you My little red one, the orange emergency one I bought about three years ago now I don't remember actually paying that much for it but uh, all of a sudden I think because they've gone more popular the Solscape bivvies even as they stand now price has suddenly shot up it's a real shame it should be accessible to every bush crafter or prepper, bush prepper they should be really accessible but that kind of material that on the inside we don't have that here in the UK I know a lot of you guys out in America are actually making your tents with that built in and your sleeping bags with that stuff built in and we're, we're just not doing it we're miles behind here in the UK and it's a real shame because we've got to get that kind of kit separate and add it to ours it's another honest review uh, it's only my opinion but I think if you're serious about bivvy camping and you want to stay warm and you want something a little more lightweight from your kit than the uh, army surplus because I've got the pattern 90 and I've got the Gore-Tex bag there's a lot of volume to that and there's also a lot of weight to it compared to a lightweight sleeping bag maybe two three seasons even a jungle bag or a blanket and the SOL escape bivvy so we've got a lot more coming up including some great nights out until next time take care of yourself see you there